Hey everyone, Julie Golub, Smith & Wesson Ambassador here with another new pistol for you. Are you a fan of 22 Magnum? With an MSRP of $649 and huge capacity, you're gonna wanna check this one out. I'm a pro shooter sharing my passion for guns, gear, and shooting sports here on YouTube and elsewhere on social media. You can take a look at my posts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, threads, and more at Julie Golub and also on my website, juliegolub.com. As a member of Team Smith & Wesson, the company was kind enough to send me this pistol to share with you, so let's talk! 22 Magnum. Developed in the late 50s by Winchester, 22 WMR is more than just rimfire on steroids. It boasts a larger case, which means greater case capacity for powder, resulting in some speedy velocity in excess of 1,500 feet per second out of shorter barrels, and even greater velocity out of rifle barrels. The bullet diameters of 22 rimfire and 22 magnum are the same, but that doesn't mean these calibers are interchangeable. Safety note here, it is important not to shoot regular 22 out of a firearm chambered for 22 magnum. Always make sure you shoot ammunition specifically chambered for your firearm. Even though the grain weights are light for this Magnum cartridge, with a velocity so fast, the result is a flatter shooting cartridge that can shoot more accurately at greater distances. It also hits hard, a lot harder than the standard 22 rimfire, making it a good option for short to medium ranges. Now, this is not a new caliber for Smith & Wesson. For example, the Model 648 is a stainless steel K-frame eight shot revolver with a six inch barrel. I have never shot one, but I imagine with the barrel length and the heft of 46 plus ounces, it's probably awesome to shoot. But capacity, as with all revolvers, is limited. If you do love wheel guns, that is an option for you in 22 Magnum. This week, Smith & Wesson added a firearm to the caliber lineup with the MMP 22 Magnum. With almost four times the capacity potential of that eight shot revolver, 30 plus one rounds in a semi-auto, yeah, I am excited for it. The pistol comes with two, two 30 round magazines. Let that sink in for a second. The MMP 22 Magnum is a larger frame pistol, and if you've seen the MMP 57, it looks very similar. You have a 4.35 inch barrel with a thin slide. The overall width of the frame comes in at just over an inch. As I mentioned, it comes with the two 30 round mags that do extend beyond the frame a good bit. They also have textured base pads with little indentations that make it easier to grip them. Texture can also be found on the magazine release button that can be switched to the opposite side of the grip. The grip has a blockier feel to it than say other full size MMPs, so more like the 5.7 than say an MMP9. Slide serrations along the top help reduce glare and it comes with a fiber optic front sight. Sight radius on this gun is long at seven inches, so if you do wanna stay with iron sights, that's really nice. It also has optics ready capability. Because it has this slim slide, you'll wanna look at the smaller optics to mount on it. I have a Trigicon RMR CC with a special adapter plate mounted to my 5.7. I'll throw a picture in here and I'll likely add that to this pistol as well. Similar to the 5.7, it also uses the new Tempo barrel system. Though its function and design are a little different from the 5.7, it delivers the same results and reliability. A front gas port keeps everything locked up until the bullet exits the barrel. That means greater consistency shot to shot with increased accuracy potential as well. This is an internal hammer fired pistol, so not a striker fired gun like many other MMPs. You have a flat faced trigger that's nice and crisp with really good reset. Keep in mind that because this is rimfire, you'll want to invest in snap caps or a dry fire plug of sorts if you do plan to dry fire this pistol. It has a Picatinny style rail for mounting accessories. It features an ambidextrous slide lock, so a plus for lefties. It also has an ambidextrous external thumb safety. If you've watched my other videos, you know I like to ride the thumb safety with my strong side thumb. That's usually best done with a paddle type safety that has enough of a ledge for the thumb to rest. This is a more subtle safety in size, but it does have firm activation and deactivation. 
I find that I need to use my support hand thumb to engage the safety in the up position so as not to alter my shooting grip on the gun with my strong hand, but I have no issues deactivating it with my strong thumb. Smith & Wesson has a list of test and ammo that the gun performs best with. I'll pop that on the screen for y'all. Something I've really paid attention to thanks to the shooting sports is how I load my mags, and this comes in handy when loading 22 Magnum. Rimfire in general can be pretty finicky. Try to load your mags consistently, and if you hear any rattling after you've loaded it, give that base pad a tap. This can help settle everything into place. I'm using Federal's 50 grain jacketed small game loads. You may see this packaged as small game or game shock at your local dealer. The listed muzzle velocity is 1530 feet per second and a box of 50 is $19.99 for an MSRP, so pretty good. I have not chronographed this yet, but I hope to soon. I'm really curious to see how fast the stuff is going through there. The gun shoots ridiculously flat. That combined with the trigger's short stroke and reset, it's very easy to shoot this gun quickly. Sights are quick to recover and it's just, just a joy to shoot. Unlike the Smith & Wesson 648 revolver, this pistol is very lightweight and weighs half as much as the revolver at 22 ounces. This will be a bit more comfortable to wear in a holster. Now, I don't see a big draw for people using this for concealed carry because it's pretty big. And 22 caliber in general is not highly desired in the CCW world. But if that's your jam, you certainly can. <laughs> I do think it's a really nice option for a field pistol. Mine is heading off to my buddy John McLean of FPS Holsters. John is just starting out, and if you want to connect with him, you can email him at fpsholsters at gmail.com. I plan on wearing it open carry around our property, specifically for coop control. If you follow me elsewhere, you know we have chickens, and this year, oh, it has been especially hard for predators. We like to free range our chickens anytime we can, but we just cannot keep up with the fox and coyote attacks on the flock. We've had to keep the chickens in the run for most of the spring and into the summer. But that hasn't stopped uh, possums or a raccoon or more scaling our fence, even with our electric fencing, with 30 rounds per mag and an RMR CC and a flashlight. Mm -hmm. If something is attacking the hens, this is gonna be a go-to option for me. Again, MSRP is $649, and if you'd like to learn more, head on over to smith-wesson.com. As always, thanks so much for watching, and until the next one, be safe, have fun, and live your life fully loaded.